part two. Last week we discussed briefly about uh, certification of ships, which ships are supposed to carry, which type of certificates. We also discussed about MLC certificates, document of compliance, safe money certificate, safety money management certificates, you know, safety construction certificate, passenger ship safety certificate, and others. So today we are going to discuss about the validity of those certification. And also we are going to discuss about the harmonized system of surveillance certification. So uh, if you have any question, you can stop me as we go on, or you can just drop uh, your question through a chat. You can raise your hand so that uh, we can stop and clarify. So uh, we're going to start with what we call alternative compliance scheme. So quite often in oral exams, I've come across a lot of examiners asking these questions. What is alternative compliance scheme? So basically alternative compliance scheme is mostly applicable to UK registered vessels because it's an initiative that was uh, introduced by Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. Uh, MCA. So basically it streamlines the surveillance certification process, you know, for maintaining standards and minimizing duplication efforts by uh, classification societies. So as we go on, we are going to look at the various classification societies that has been approved by MCA. So it's not every classification society that can issue a particular certification. It has to be an authorized classification uh, society. So before we proceed further, we are going to look at the, a bit of background of alternative compliance scheme. So this scheme particularly uh, delegates all survey works to the United Kingdom's authorized classification societies. And in the next slide, we are going to look at who are the United Kingdom class, uh, classification societies, the authorized one. We have the Lloyd's uh, registered, American Bureau of Shipping, DNVGL. You know, we have the NK class. So among them, so we are going to uh, see it as we go on. So this uh, ACS, you know, also allows Maritime and Coast Guard Agency to maintain an oversized structure of ships and its management system through the SCA inspections. So basically I'll give you a background. It's not every ship, it's not mandatory for every ship to go into this uh, ACA compliance, alternative compliance scheme. There are certain criteria before you can be able to apply and join this particular scheme. So we're going to also look at those criteria. It has to be with seaworthiness of the vessel. It has to be with how often uh, you, your number of deficiency, your last port state, uh, port state inspection. It also have to do with Things like uh, maybe your ship has been detained. It means you will not be admitted, admitted into this uh, scheme. So it's very, very important. Uh, last week, I mentioned something that uh, all certificates, you know, are issued by class. Uh, class, they are the authorized body that the flag state, you know, authorize them to issue all these certifications. So all certificates are issued by class on behalf of the flag state, except in the United Kingdom. There are a few certificates that are not issued by class. That, those certificates are only issued by MCA. Only MCA issued those certificates. So you have to take note of it during orals. The examiner might ask you that, uh, can you please list the number of certificates that are not issued by classification societies? So you will look at it. One of it is a doc document of compliance. So as you are aware, a document of compliance is issued to the company to show that the company is in compliance with ISM code. The second certificate is the safety management certificate, which is issued to the ship to show that the ships and its management are operating in accordance to approved safety management code. You know, so it's very, very important. These two certificates, they are not issued by class in the UK. The other certificate, again, that is not issued by class is the International Ship Security Certificate, which is the ISSC. So ISSC is issued when you are in compliance with ISM code. 
So this particular certificate cannot also be issued by classification society on behalf of MCA. So this certificate is issued by MCA Surveyor. And the last and not the least is the MLC uh, certificate. So MLC certificate also is a sole responsibility of MCAs. So these particular uh, certificates are only issued by MCA, while all other certificates are issued by uh, class on behalf of MCA. So we are going to look at the application of uh, alternative compliance scheme, the ACS. So uh, this alternative compliance scheme is available to all UK registered vessels other than passenger ships. So passenger ships are not, you know, uh, are not allowed to enroll into this particular scheme because they have their own special requirement. We are going to see that in the harmonized system of survey and certification. So uh, this alternative compliance scheme also is available for all international seagoing vessels. That means vessels of over 500 gross tonnage and above engage in international sea trade. And these particular vessels, like I said last week, I, I tend to uh, describe what is a solar vessels, which vessels are non-solar vessels. So this particular uh, scheme is applicable to only uh, solar compliance vessels. That means vessels that are in compliance with the principal international maritime conventions. And what are the international uh, principal international maritime conventions, or what we call the four pillars of uh, the international maritime sector? One of them is SOLAS, uh, safety of life at sea. The other one is MAPOL, you know, prevention of pollution at sea. And the other one has to do with STCW95, which is a standard of training certification and watchkeeping for seafarers. And the last but not the least, the MLC, Maritime Labor Convention, you know, which have to do with uh, seafarers' rights. It's a very, very important uh, regulation. So all every vessel that is in compliance with this can be can enroll uh, to this alternative compliance scheme. So let's look at which vessels are eligible. You know, so like I said, it's not mandatory you know, and is not for all vessels. Just like now, can you say every vessel of 500 gross tonnage up, uh, and above is mandated to comply with solars. So in this case, it's not mandated for you to comply with uh, alternative compliance uh, scheme. So we look at, there are some conditions that apply. So before you will be, you will be eligible to be considered, one, the vessel, you know, has to ensure that they have not been detained in the previous 36 months. And uh, I think in our subsequent uh, classes, we are going to look at what it means by detention notice and prohibition notice. You know, detention notice, the vessel has been detained uh, following the outcome of posted control inspection until all the deficiencies have been resolved or has been remedied before the vessel will be allowed to sell while prohibition notice is the vessel is prohibited completely until the vessel complied with certain regulation. And also there's a fine, you know, that has to do with prohibition uh, notice. So it's very, very uh, important. So the other factor uh, condition that uh, a vessel must comply is during the any posted inspection within the last 12 months, you know, no inspection reports shall have shall record a deficiencies of more than uh, five. So if you have more than five deficiencies, then in the last 12 months, not 18 months, in the last 12 months, then you are not eligible to be enrolled into this uh, scheme. And very important, your vessel have to be classed, as you are aware of uh, every vessel has to be classed. So your vessel must be classed with only the authorized UK classification societies, which I discussed earlier. You have the ABS, American Barrier of Shipping. You have the BV, you have the DNV GL, you have the Lloyd's Register, you have the Class NK and the RENA. So your vessel must be classed among the recognized UK classification society. So if your vessel is not one in classified under one of these, then it means that you are not eligible 
to be considered for enrollment. So the next thing is one of the very, very important criteria is just like an undertaking because this is not uh, an entry requirement, but it's an undertaking that the owner shall permit access by MCA to all the records, files, reports, and uh, certificates that are held or issued by classification societies. And what are those certificates? We talk about safety construction certificates, safety equipment certificate, you know, safe mining certificate, those ones that are all issued by classification society. So they must be ready, readily available for MCA surveyor to inspect at any time. And another undertaking is the owner or the operator shall notify MCA one month in advance of all in-water surveys. As you are aware, in-water surveys is the one that takes place uh, two and a half years, you know, while a full dry docking survey takes place every five years, which, uh, you know, in-water survey means you survey the ship when the vessel is in the water, while dry docking, you know, the vessel have to be out of the water in the key before you can be able to inspect it. So if you look at it, there's an extract. I uh, got this extract from uh, MCA website. So it talks about uh, statutory uh, certificate authorized to uh, ACS, recognized uh, organizations. So recognized organizations, those are the class. So you can look at it here is, uh, when you look at the cargo ship safety construction certificate, Initially, initial one must be full. If you are in this scheme, there is no interim at all. As you are aware, some new build ship will go for interim certificates until after six or 18 months before the full certificate will be issued. But if you are enrolled in this scheme, you start with the initial certificate must be full. You know, you must have full-time certificate, short-term certificate, annual certificate. So you have all of the exemption is, if you look at it, it's all no, no. So the bottom line is there is no exemption when it comes to uh, when you are on alternative compliance scheme and there is no issuance of interim uh, certification, which is not applied. So these are all the certificates and the codes. F is full authorization. N is no. C is, you know, they consider it on case by case basis. And A is you advise MCA uh, of the need to issue a short time certificate where there are significant defects. For example, you have issues with your uh, VDR and then you have an alternative means. So you have maybe a temporary dispensation uh, for you to sail until you get to the next port where the technician will be arranged, you know, to attend to the vessel. So it's very, very important for you to know uh, all this. So uh, we have come to the end of this alternative compliance scheme. So if you have uh, any questions, please, you can ask before we proceed to harmonize system of survey and certification. So the floor is open now before we proceed further. Any question? Okay, in the absence of uh, no other question, let's move on to harmonized system of surveillance certification, which is known as HSSC. So uh, I believe uh, for those of you guys that have uh, worked to certain ranks on the vessel, you should be aware of this. Sometimes the superintendent might send a mail that the ship needs to carry out annual inspection report uh, annual inspection survey. And if you are the third officer on that ship, you will be delegated the task of checking that all fire extinguishers are in date and you prepare the fire extinguishers for uh, annual servicing in your next port. If you are in charge of life saving appliances, you know you will be delegated the task of ensuring that all the life saving appliances are in place. And then you have a surveyor that will join at the next port you know, to carry out the annual survey of lifeboat, launch it, check the David and everything. So it's uh, very, very important for you to know uh, this. So what is harmonized uh, system of survey and certification? It's simply like harmony. You bring up everything together. 
you seek to standardize everything together. So it's very, very important. As you are aware, there are nine main convention certificates that we discussed last week. You know, so this harmonized system of survey and certification seeks to standardize the nine main convention certificate to a maximum period validity of five years for all the nine except one, which is the passenger ship safety certificate. Like I discussed last week, the passenger ship safety certificate is issued every year. So you have to renew it every year. It's subject to annual renewal. So it's not subjected to a five yearly renewal. So under the harmonized system of survey and certification, you have the initial survey and you have the intermediate intermediary or what we call a periodic survey. And you also have what we call the renewal survey and you have what we call an additional survey. So initial survey is a survey that is carried out on the vessel before the vessel is put into service. We are going to look at it in detail in the next uh, slide. You know, so you have annual survey, like I said, the survey that is carried out at annual uh, interval every year is on a year by year uh, uh, basis. And then you also have what we call the intermediate survey or periodic survey is carried out every two and a half years. Mostly is during in water survey. So you carry out this type of uh, survey. So, and you have additional survey. So for instance, now if you have a major repair or a major alteration to any of your machinery, so you will be required to carry out an additional uh, survey. If you have a collision and there uh, seems to be some major repairs, so you need also to carry out an additional uh, survey in order for the vessel to be fully uh, certified. So, uh, under the harmonized system of surveillance certification, like I said, mentioned earlier, there are seven different types of survey. And you have to take note of this because you might get asked during your oral examination so it's uh, very, very important for you to know that we have seven types of survey. So these seven types of survey, they do not include maybe, you know, the condition for assignment of load line is not included here. However, a load line survey is included here. So uh, the first one is the initial survey, as I mentioned earlier, this type of survey is carried out before the vessel is put into service you know, is being carried out by uh, classification societies on behalf of the flag state. So you have the next one, which is called a renewal survey. This type of survey is carried out every five years. So renewal survey is normally carried out during the full dry docking of the vessel. So you have periodic survey and intermediary survey, they all interchange two and a half yearly surveys. And you have what we call the annual survey, which all of us might have been familiar with. This type of survey takes place every year. And you have the inspection of uh, outside of the ship's bottom, which has to do with the uh, in uh, water survey. So this type of survey is carried out sometime when the ship is in water by divers, or when the ship is in dry dock, you can carry it out this inspection by uh, surveyors. And we have what we call additional survey. So additional survey, like I mentioned earlier, if there's a major alteration, so you are bound to carry out an additional uh, surveying. So additional surveying is uh, very, very important for recertification uh, purpose. So we have mentioned these uh, different types of survey and certification. But as you are all aware now, the COVID uh, pandemic has changed, you know, the global landscape of shipping. So most of this survey, instead of being carried out physically, they are being carried out remotely now. So I've seen an instance where they now you carry out what we call remote sire. So it's being done over the Zoom or on, over the camera. So these are all allowed under the International Association of classification societies. 
So, and if care is not taken, we don't know yet, but that might become the norm in the industry in the near future. So uh, let's talk about passenger ships now before we move to cargo ships. So passenger ships, they are special ships, uh, just like if you have an aeroplane that's engaged in uh, passenger operations and an aeroplane that is engaged in, let's say, cargo operations, they have different rules and regulations that are applicable to them. And in the case of a passenger vessel, like I said last week, a passenger vessel is any vessel that carries more than 12 uh, passengers. So if you have the passenger vessel, you have an initial survey. So what is an initial survey for passenger vessel? It's an initial survey that is carried out before the vessel is put into service. And it involves uh, surveying of the ship structure, uh, the machinery, the boilers, the cargo, uh, hand, they don't have cargo handling equipment, but they have few cranes for lifting, uh, firefighting appliances, which include the fixed and the portable firefighting equipment, the life-saving equipment, which also include the portable and, you know, live boat, live rafts, you know, and all the life jackets, as you are aware, some passenger ships, carry as much as 3,000 passengers, you know, uh, navigational equipment, navigational charts, but now you say it exists because if exists is your primary means of navigation, you know, you also talk about the distress flares, you know, the smoke detector, the hand flare and the rocket parachutes. Uh, you, they also need to be inspected at an uh, initial uh, surveying or the electrical installation to ensure that they comply with the requirement of solars and classification societies. They are all being inspected. Uh, the whole structure, you know, they are all being inspected at initial survey. And this particular survey is carried out on behalf of the flag state by uh, an authorized uh, class surveyor. So it's very, very important for you to know this. The next type of survey is called the renewal survey. The renewal survey is a survey, like I said, the validity for passenger ship certificates is yearly. So every year you have to carry out what we call a renewal survey. So, and it includes the same surveying of all the equipment that have been carried out in the phase phase, which is the initial survey, which includes boilers, ship structure, nautical, charts, uh, navigation equipment, egg disc, pilot ladder, distress, signal flares, you know, and the rest of them is very, very important. This survey is carried out every year. That is for passenger ships. So the next uh, type of survey is what we call the additional survey for passenger ships. So the additional survey uh, can either be a general or a partial survey. It depends on the circumstances. So if uh, a ship has a major repair, you know, you might have an uh, additional uh, survey. If a ship is involved in collision and they have repaired the hull, so an additional survey might be required to check the integrity of the ship, you know, and some other parts that has been, that has been damaged in the course of uh, the collision. So the next uh, class of vessel is the cargo ships. So now we are finished with the passenger ship, we are moved into the cargo ship. So for cargo ships, you also have what we call the initial survey. So the initial survey uh, is carried out before the vessel is put into service and it includes inspection of ship structure, machinery and equipment, electrical installation, uh, the outside structure of the ship, including the coating, the boilers, which are quite very important, the main engines, machinery, the firefighting appliances, life-saving appliances, which includes live boat, live raft. You know, you have the EEBD, you know, you also have the uh, hand flares, you know, among them. You also have what we call the pilot ladder because it's listed among the life-saving appliances on the ship. 
So uh, navigational equipment, navigational chart, if chart are your primary means of navigation, and uh, EGDIS, if EGDIS is your primary or backup means of navigation. So this inspection is carried out before the vessel is put into service. So for cargo ships, they are also subject to annual survey, which includes surveying of all the equipment mentioned during in initial survey. Like I said, if you are going to prepare for, you might have a question during your oral examination, the examiner might ask you, how do you prepare your vessel for annual survey? So first of all, you say, okay, you are going to go through the list of all the firefighting appliances to ensure they are up to date before you arrive at the next port where a technician will come and service them. You also ensure that uh, all the certifications in respect to this equipment are up to date. You also ensure that all equipment are as per place where they are. You are not supposed to have a live wrap that is a six man live wrap that is supposed to be forward being kept in the manifold. So you are also going to uh, go through the annual inspection checklist and ensure that all the items listed are being checked, which includes all the machinery, equipment, cargo handling gears, firefighting, life saving, you know, electrical installation, pilot ladders, navigational charts are all in place and certifications are in place. So it's very, very important for you to know that. So the next one is what we call the renewal survey, which takes place every five years. <laughs> So this includes renewal of uh, survey in boilers. You check, they inspect the boilers, they open the boilers and they inspect it. They, up, uh, they inspect the ship structures, the tanks, you know, the cathodic protection, the anode. They inspect uh, nautical charts, you know, to ensure everything is up to date. You know, so this renewal survey is, <clears throat> very, very important. So you have another survey in cargo ship, which is intermediary survey. We are going to discuss about it as we go on. So I'm going to pick uh, these certifications <coughs> that cargo ships are required to carry. And we are going to look at the initial renewal and maybe the annual survey. So you have equipment on the ships. You use certain equipment for communication. You use certain types of equipment for fire in event of fire. You use certain types of equipment, you know, to save life at sea in case you have issues like man overboard. You use certain types of uh, equipment to balance the ship, you know, to avoid uh, stresses. So we are going to look at them one by one. So the first one now is what we call the cargo ship radio installations. So all the radio equipment on the ship, which includes the MFHF, VHF, you know, part of the radio equipment include the SATs, which are also classified as LSC and FFA, the EPEPs, the MFHF, you know, these are all the SATC, you know, the long range tracking, which is installed in one of your SATC, you know, it's very, very important for you to know all these uh, ship radio installations. So all the ship radio installations that are being installed in the vessel, including those used for life saving appliances, which are the SAT EPEP, you know, which they are part of the radio equipment that are used for life saving appliances. Uh, VDR is also part of uh, radio equipment. So all these radio installations in the ship, they are subjected to initial surveying. You survey them before the ship is put into service. You survey MFHF and you certify them. So on certification, they will give you what we call the safety radio certificate. And you have an appendix called Form R, you know, attached to it, which we discussed last week. And uh, for the radio installation equipment, they are only subjected to a renewal survey. So renewal survey, meaning that you have to inspect all you know, the radio installation equipment, which is MFHF, VHF, SAT-C, SAT-M, SAT-B, which are no longer in existence, you know, SAT, uh, EPEP, you know, uh, you anything that is part of your radio installations that is being used for communication 
for uh, safety of uh, life at sea. So that is for uh, uh, sh cargo ships only for their ship's radio uh, installation. The next one is uh, about the cargo ship structure, machinery and equipment. <laughs> so for structures, for radio, you have to be aware that for radios it's only initial and renewal. But for structures, you have an initial survey, you know, which uh, involves a complete inspection of the structure of the ship. You know, everything that have to do with the hull, the structure, the ballast tanks, the cargo tanks, everything, the entire structure from fore to aft, you know, the accommodation structure, deck structure, deck fittings to ensure there are no cracks, you know, no damages. You do also inspection of machineries, which include pump rooms, uh, main engine rooms. If you're in the gas carriers, it involves the compressor house and motor room, you know, all the machinery space that are in the ship. So they are all to be inspected before the ship is put into service. You know, also very important is the inspection of outside ship bottom which have to do with the entire hull, check the protect, uh, cathodic protection, everything against anti-fouling put into a uh, service. So another aspect of the inspection also that I didn't mention is the boilers, which is very important also. You have to inspect the boilers and ensure they are all in good order. So that inspection is being carried out before the vessel is put into service. Once the surveyor, is happy, is satisfied that the ship comply with all the requirements of solars. Then uh, what you call cargo ship safety construction certificate is issued at this point. And then what happens once it is issued? After a year, you conduct what is called an annual survey. So an annual survey is a survey of the whole equipment structures, machinery and equipment that I referred above. You know, all this equipment that ensure the vessel remains seaworthy, you know, without danger to ship uh, or to personnel on board. So these equipments, they are all inspected annually and they are all endorsed. So if you go to safety construction certificate, there's an appendix behind where the surveyor endorses it annually. So it's very, very important for you to know that. So... After two and a half years, when the vessel goes for what we call in-water survey, so which takes place every two and a half years, you have what we call the intermediary uh, survey. So it also involves surveying of the ship structure, boilers, and other equipment that we have all listed. And also there's also an appendix attached to read for record of all intermediary uh, surveys. So it's very, very important. So last but not the least here is the renewal survey. So renewal survey, this survey, you know, when I started, I told you the reason why we have the harmonized system of survey and certification is we seek, you know, to have a kind of synergy between all certificates. They should have a maximum validity of five years. Uh, you won't have a certificate of five years, another four years. So that when it comes for renewal, it's harmonized. You do everything together. So that is what it means by harmonized system of surveillance certification. So after five years, you can, you have what we call a renewal survey. So this normally it's been carried out during dry docking. So full inspection of machinery space, equipment, the boiler has been opened, you know, to ensure that they comply with relevant regulation and to also ensure that the vessels remain seaworthy that is not going to endanger the crew and is going, going to endanger the vessels as well. So it's very, very important. So these are the basic surveys that have been carried out for cargo ship structure, uh, machinery and uh, equipment. So now uh, I've mentioned about all uh, these inspections. So it's very, very important we have to look at uh, inspection of outside of the ship's bottom. So uh, we have different requirements also for passenger ship and cargo ships. And uh, the examiner might decide to ask you, what, is, what are the requirements for inspection of outside of ship bottoms? And don't think like, you are, don't feel like as if, because you have always been working on the supplier vessel, that they won't ask you about passenger vessel. 
uh, your certificate of competency is uh, unlimited. So they can ask you about passenger ships. They can ask you about bulk carrier and everything. Uh, in my case, there was a time they asked me about the alarms. What are the various alarms, safety alarms on a bulk carrier? And I've never been on a bulk carrier, you know, but I just have to answer them because my certificate is uh, unlimited. So for passenger ships, uh, for passenger ship, the inspection is required every year. You know, when we started, I told you the harmonized system of survey and certification stick seek to standardize all the survey of the nine major certificates, you know, for a, to a maximum validity period of five years, except for passenger ships. So inspection of the ship bottoms in passenger ship must be carried out every year. It's every year, you know. However, there are some waivers, you know. What are the waivers that, uh, you know, the class or the uh, flag state gives? So one of the waiver is uh, on the year in which the out of so, uh, water survey does not take place. You know, if the inspection of the outside ship buttons does not take place in that particular year, you know, so entirely you have to carry out an in-water survey. If you can't carry out a full uh, dry docking survey, you have to carry out an in-water survey because every year, you are supposed to dry dock it, check outside of it when it is out of water. But in case, let's say in 2000, you carry out, in 2001, you are unable because of your major trading routes or you have some other uh, factors that are uh, maybe beyond your reasonable doubt that you won't be able to carry out that inspection. Then the inspection of uh, bottom shall be carried out, which is in water survey. So, but another clause is uh, as a minimum, two of these surveys shall be carried out in every uh, five years at an interval of not exceeding 36 months. You know, so the best bit of it is for you to carry out your annual survey every, every year, because even if you don't carry it out, you are still going to do the in-water survey. So, which is also capital uh, intensive. So for cargo ships, the scenario is different. So every cargo ship, you know, there shall be minimum of two inspections in every five years. Like I said, you have uh, the initial one, which is not being uh, counted just before the ship is put into service. But once the ship is in service, there are only two inspections. One of it is, maybe, uh, this inspection is regarding inspection of the ship's bottom. It's two inspection, which is every two and a half years. In five years, that means two times you carry out these inspections. So it's very, very important for you to know. And then the inspection shall be carried out when the vessel is uh, out of water. Like I say, during full dry docking, you inspect the bottom. If it is in water survey, then the, uh, what we call the divers goes to inspect the vessel. They have their cameras, they record, and they bring the entire result to the survey. So it's uh, very important for you to know that. So, we are going to look at the validity of a uh, harmonized system of surveillance certifications. So what happened now if you are on the voyage and your certificate is supposed to expire, let's say on the 14th of July, and then you are supposed to arrive, let's say Antwerp or Rotterdam on 14th of July, but because of weather, you know, you encounter some heavy weather around Tenerife and then your speed drops and then you are arriving instead of arriving on the 10, you are arriving on the 14 and your certificate by then will be expired. So what will happen? The immediate action is for you to inform class uh, on, and because class acts on behalf of uh, the port state and what they will do is they will give you what we call a three month extension. And this extension is three months from the day of expiry. So, so that it enables you to get to the next port to be able to carry your survey. So after that three months, you are not going to have any extension. It means that your ship is not seaworthy. It means that your ship can easily be detained and it can be prohibited from going to sea. So first of all is the maximum period of validity for all certificate is five years, except for passenger ship safety certificate, which is one year as we discussed uh, early. So it's very important when you join a vessel as a master, sometimes they'll ask you, what will you do when joining vessel as a master? Yes, I know you will start from when you are coming out the gangway, 
you know, that you check the hall, check the gangway. Sometimes they say check the draft. You know, when you get check this compliance with security, as you walk through the deck, you know, you look out for uh, how the life saving appliances are. When you get to the bridge or when you get to the master's office, when you are inspecting certificate, the first thing the examiner would like to know is to check the validity of all the certificates. There's no point you join the ship as a master and you didn't check the validity of the certificate and the ship have to sail. You know, and once the ship sail, you know, you know that the voyage might take few days and the ship certificates have expired. So it's a, it can attract a lot of fines as up. It will have a negative reputation about, about your company. So it's very, very important for you to check the validity to ensure that it is five years valid. So the next one is the renewal survey. So renewal survey shall be carried out uh, up to three months before the expiry. So let's say the five years is on the 10th of July. So three months down, you know, you are talking about May, June, July. So by May, you can renew it. Uh, the certificate so you can renew three months before the expiry of the existing certificate so the regulation does not allow you to renew six months earlier it says three months so if assuming now you are going maybe from australia to certain a long part of uh, let's say to south africa or to africa and where the voyage is very long and you might have encountered a lot of bad weather which has have a negative impact on your speed so Clause three now apply that you are allowed to extend it for another three months period. You know, you can renew it three months before expiry and you can also renew it three months after expiry, but the class must be aware of that. So it's very, very important. Otherwise we are going to have what we call as a condition of class or you have a memorandum. So these are not things maybe possibly they might ask you in orders because this has to do with uh, ship management about condition of class and uh, memorandum. So uh, basically here I have an extract about the major certificates. And uh, if you look at the years, <laughs> so if you look at passion, passenger ship safety uh, certificate here, if you look at in year one, you have renewal, year two, you must renew it, year three, you must renew it, year four, you must renew it, and year five, you must renew it. So you are supposed to carry out renewal survey every year. So that is a requirement of harmonized system of survey and certification, and that is a standard global practice. So the next one is a safety equipment certificate. In the first year, you can have annual survey, uh, annual survey, we have already discussed about it. In the second year, you can have annual or periodic, which I say can take place, which is uh, two and a half years. So in between year two and year three, you can have annual or periodic, annual or periodic, which is a two and a half years window is there. And on the fourth year is annual. And the fifth year, you have the renewal uh, survey. So when you go to uh, the safety, uh, radio certificates and uh, is all uh, periodic, periodic, periodic and renewal. Like I said, is you only have periodic survey and renewal for the safety radio. As we mentioned, there is no annual uh, survey. It's only intermediate survey or renewal survey. So the next one now is safety construction uh, certificate, which you have the annual survey in the uh, first year. And first year, what first year means is between uh, one month up to uh, 15 months, you know. So you might have annual or intermediate survey again, you know, uh, between year two and year three. And year four is normally annual survey. Five, year five is renewal survey, which is your full dry docking. The same apply to IGC code and the GC code. Uh, the IGC code have to do with the you know, certificate of fitness for liquefied natural gases, you know, so it's very, very important for you to know if you're on an LNG carrier, that this IR certificate of fitness is valid for a period of uh, five years, subject to annual intermediate and renewal uh, survey. So you have the IBC and the BC uh, head court. This is the bulk court that have to do with bulk carrier. 
as you are aware, you have what we call document of authorization. You must have a document of authorization before you are allowed to load grain, you know, uh, in a bulk carrier. So this particular document is subject to annual surveying, annual or intermediate, you know, and it has also annual in the fourth year and the renewal in the fifth year. And uh, very important load line. So you can see load line is different. It's annual, every year you have annual survey for uh, load line and you don't have any intermediate survey, you know, for load line. So during in water survey, you will just carry out the normal annual survey for load line. For MAPOL, you know, the scenario changes here. So you have annual survey in the first year and same second year is annual and intermediary, you know, or just was carried out during in water survey. Fourth year is annual and fifth year is renewal. And as you are aware for MAPO, they have to inspect everything, you know, that is uh, stipulated, you know, in the record of uh, MAPO uh, equipment. They have to check your ODME, you know, they have to check uh, all your pipes, overboard pipes and everything before you are being issued uh, with this certificate. The oil record book have to be inspected and all those things. So same with Maple Annex 1, which is oil Annex 2, you know, same, you have also those uh, inspections. Also, if you are in compliance with Annex 3, Annex 4, which you have all those certificates, Annex 6, you also have all this annual, annual or intermediary, annual and uh, full uh, renewal uh, certification. So it's very, very important for you to know this because it's a frequent question that has been asked in the past during our uh, oral uh, examination. So with this, uh, we have come to the end of our lectures today. So uh, in our subsequent class, which is not supposed, next week you have a different class. So uh, maybe a week after we are going to discuss about hours of rest and uh, safe money. And then possibly we will start discussing about uh, ship handling and maneuvering which is one of my major areas of focus. So, because sometimes they do ask uh, those questions. So if you have any question, you are free to ask me now. If you have any contribution or any experience, you can as well share it to other uh, members of the house. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, thank you Captain Kelly. Um, that was really <laughs> a jump-packed one. Uh, thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions to ask as regards to certification? I I have a comment though. I have a comment to slightly add to this uh, on a practical as side for our students and a reminder about keeping expired certificates in the certificate folder. Uh, I think it's important to stress this as well, because uh, although I don't know if this happens during uh, exams, but during inspections and audits, surveys, you know, tend to find expired. I don't know why people keep it, maybe just, uh, is it that the papers they, in which the certificates are printed are so nice people don't want to throw it overboard? You know, so <laughs> yeah, this can be deficient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there are some certificates that should not be thrown away. So that's another tricky part. Uh, continuous synopsis record, please don't throw it away. So I think it's worth mentioning this from a practical angle that when you have a certificate clarify do you need to keep this or do you need to keep the old one you even some documents insurance documents you see the last year two years ago and those things are not uh, you know in compliance they picked up during ism inspections doing random audits and all that so thank you so much captain Gillespie. you're just giving us back to back as like like as like opa 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 you know two fingers in the air thank you so much we should, just like Captain Kerev said, we should really emphasize on what does the annual entails, the intermediate um, audits entail, and the renewal entail. 
for different different uh, specification. <coughs> like this um, video will be on um, on YouTube, and yeah, we can see from this slide. And I would really like us to go and really check what certificates on board requires and uh, what certificates requires the permits, what certificates um, you know just require just your renewal, because just like um, how they will ask us on in the orals as well. And even in our on board as well, we need to professionally know that, okay, what does the MC, um, SNC, what audit are we going to be expecting? Or what does the um, cargo ship safety equipment certificate, what, what audit are we going to be expecting? So these are questions that we ask as well when you are naming the, the certificate. So I really like us to go back and try to Pinpoints, okay, this certificate, what audits are required for it, because this is what makes us really um, professionals as captains and as officers and on board. Um, thank you very much, um, everyone. Um, I think it will be another interesting one um, next week. I so think next week we'll be talking a little about law, which will be on a bill of leading and um, letter of indemnity. And that has been another fairly question for um, Nigeria and the um, UK as well. So we try to bring um, someone to really try and educate us on that as well. But with that,